Today we want to talk about Taylor series. We talk about Taylor polynomials. Taylor series is just Taylor polynomials, but keep going. We'll just keep doing this forever rather than stopping at some fixed point. We already started this calculation way back in Calc 1 because the first, the, the degree zero and degree one terms of the Taylor series will be the equation for the tangent line. So the first two terms form the tangent line to the function at a point. So Taylor series is really just tangent line, but keep going. Instead of just stopping in a line, make a tangent quadratic, then a tangent cubic, then a tangent quartic, and so on. So there are many Taylor series that we're going to need to know. We're going to need to recognize them as it is. Yesterday, we found um, the, the first important one, the Taylor series for e to the x. We found the third degree Taylor polynomial approximating e to the x near x equals 0. And that was 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Now we need to make that third degree Taylor polynomial we found yesterday into a Taylor series. Now it's a Taylor series because we just put plus dot dot dot. Just said keep following this pattern, and we can summarize that pattern as say, by saying that the terms are all x to the n over n factorial. So here's our first important Taylor series that we need to just recognize. This series uh, we don't have to mention that we're centered at zero because the terms say we're centered at zero. It says x minus a to the n, and we're writing x minus zero to the n. So that tells us where the middle is. Now, what we are looking at over here is a power series. The question when we're dealing with a power series is for what values of x does the power series converge? So let's take a quick look. If all we had was the x to the n part, then this would converge for x between, strictly between negative one and one. But I've got this n factorial in the denominator. And that's going to win over this weak ass exponential up in the numerator. So the factorial is going to leave an n behind in the denominator in the limit from the ratio test. So the limit from the ratio test is going to be zero, regardless of the value of x. So this power series converges. for all real numbers. Remember what it means to improve your, uh, your polynomial approximation by using more terms. More terms means the approximation will be closer to the actual value and work on a wider interval. And this will work up to the interval of convergence. So if your interval of convergence is all real numbers, that means if we use enough terms, we can model e to the x at this polynomial anywhere. The further we are from zero, the more terms we're going to need. And it's going to become unwieldy. We might want to shift things around a little bit. Or since e to the x is a well-known function, just use e to the x. We have massive amounts of computing power these days. Think about the amount of computing power in this room, even with the half, half the class not in attendance and not every single student having a smartphone. I think of all the smartphones that are in the room right now.
that's a lot of computing power. So there are some things that we need to know that we can do with these Taylor series. Then we're back to some more Taylor series. We can treat them just like we would a function. So if I have e to the negative two, all I've done is plug the negative two into the e to the x. I can take that same negative two and put it into the Taylor series. Note that I wouldn't ask about the interval of convergence here because now we plug the value of x into our power series, and that just produces a series. A series that we know converges because the interval of convergence for the Taylor series for e to the x is all real number. And then when we look at this negative two that's been plugged in, we can see that this power series is going to converge. Or sorry, we can see that this series is going to converge. The negative two to the n will leave behind a two in the ratio test. The n factorial will leave behind an n plus one. So the limit of n goes to infinity will be zero. So this series is absolutely convergent. We're not talking about the interval of convergence. We're just deciding whether this series converges. So we can plug stuff into our Taylor series. This goes so far as to plug in, um, make a composition of functions. So instead of just e to the negative two, if I raise e to the negative x squared, we can do the same thing. E to the negative x squared, since there's an x in it, that's a power series. We care about the interval of convergence for a power series. And it'd be pretty easy to talk ourselves into the radius, of the interval of convergence for this power series to be, once again, all real numbers. We've got exponential stuff in the numerator, but we've got factorial stuff in the denominator. That factorial in the denominator will be the one over n plus one in the limit from the ratio test. And that limit will go to zero. So the interval of convergence is all real numbers. So I picked this e to the minus x squared because we've been talking, we talked a lot about integration. And we know that e to the minus x squared does not have a nice antiderivative. It's not the derivative of some finite combination of elementary functions. So remember, e to the x minus x squared does not have 
a nice antiderivative. That is, e to the minus x squared is not the derivative of any finite combination of elementary functions. So to write an antiderivative for e to the negative x squared, we either have to use not elementary functions by constructing an antiderivative with the second fundamental theorem of calculus, or we can use an infinite combination of elementary functions. In particular, this infinite combination of elementary functions will suffice. So if I wanted the integral, of e to the negative x squared to x. I could just integrate this function. So the integral of x is one, uh, of one is x. The integral of minus x squared is minus x to the third over three. Then we have plus x to the fourth over two factorial. So we'll have plus x to the fifth over five times two factorial. Then we'll have negative x squared to the third is a negative x to the sixth. So minus x to the sixth, oops, x to the seventh, excuse me. Over seven times three factorial and so on. We should but put a plus C, but considering the order that these terms are showing up, maybe we'll put that at the beginning of the zero degree term. So we can either, if we don't have a finite combination of elementary functions, we can use an infinite combination of elementary functions or a finite combination of non-elementary functions. Any questions? So notice that we now have a way to approximate values of e to the minus x squared to any degree of accuracy that we want. If it's not close enough, we could use more terms. Let's suppose we wanted the Taylor series for x squared times e to the x. Now, before we just jump in and say, well, we've got Taylor's formula, let's just take a bunch of derivatives. We don't want to take a bunch of derivatives because these derivatives are going to involve the product rule. There's going to be too much product rule if we just start taking derivatives. 
remember, if I want the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, I need to take five derivatives. No problem on the first one, we're going to have to use the product rule once. But now for the second derivative, we're going to, have to use more product rule. A good strategy here would be to pull out the e to the x and make it just a product of two things. So that when you go to the second derivative, take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And it's still a good strategy to factor out the e to the x. Notice that whatever, however many terms that we want, those first two terms, when we plug in zero, are going to be zero. So we need actually f at zero, which is zero. And then here, f prime of zero is also zero. Finally, when we get to f double prime, we get something that's not zero. The terms don't even start until we get to x squared. And we've got more derivatives to take. And they're just going to take longer to write. At least we got this strategy where we factor out the e to the x. Always have a product rule with just two factors. Or since we know the powers of the Taylor series for e to the x, just multiply everything by x squared. E to the x has an absolutely convergent power series. So that's an absolutely convergent power series for all real numbers. So what we know is that the addition there works like we expect it to. That's kind of the importance of absolute convergence. Absolute convergence will act more like the addition that we're used to. Conditional convergence, start messing with the order, you start messing with the value of the sum, but absolute convergence won't do that to you. And then we can summarize this by saying all we've done is increase the exponent by two. So it's x to the n plus two over n factorial. That's the same thing. What would have happened if I multiply x squared by that summation? As x squared times x to the n is x to the n plus.
I can take that x squared and pull it into the sum because it doesn't involve n. Take that x squared. What we want are more known power series or more Taylor series. Here's another couple of uh, Taylor series we should recognize sine and cosine. Uh, we'll do binomial on Friday, I guess. Now, we want to find Taylor series for a function. We got to take a bunch of derivatives, plug it into Taylor's formula. In this case, we're going to take, uh, we have a little bit of an advantage because I kind of implied that. You can just do stuff to your Taylor series, even though there's an infinite number of terms. So if we find the Taylor series for sine of x, we're not going to be taking derivative, a bunch of derivatives to find the Taylor series for cosine x. We'll just take the derivative of the Taylor series for sine x to get the Taylor series for cosine x. So let's start with sine x. The reason I want to start with cosine x is the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I'll drop a sine somewhere. I don't mess everything up. So let's start with our function. So f of zero is equal to zero. f prime of x, derivative of sine is cosine. And so f prime of zero is equal to one. The second derivative is negative sine. And the second derivative at zero is zero again. The third derivative is negative cosine. So the third derivative at zero is negative one. When we get to the fourth derivative, we get back to where we started. And so we create a loop. So this is going to be the fourth derivative at zero. And then we're just going to walk around in the loop for a while. Here's the fifth derivative. Remember, in the goal, the goal of the math class is to be able to recognize when the patterns work out so that you don't have to do all the friggin' math all the time. Don't keep taking derivatives, see what's going to happen, and then move forward from there. If you're not sure, find a way to go check. But this is just going to keep going. It looks like half the terms are going to be zero anyway.
So I start to see this uh, uh, how things are going to work for sine of x. <clears throat> sine of x is just going to be all the odd powers. We're going to have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so on. I need odd starting. Oh, I need the alternating too. I forgot the alternating. So the two n minus one bits effect to make sure everything comes out odd. I chose to start this series at one. We could have also started at zero and written uh, x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. We got to think about this is a power series. We got to think about where this power series converges. And we just do a quick inspection. That ultimately is not going to matter as far as the interval of convergence goes. In the numerator, we have the exponential x to the 2n minus 1, which is only going to convert if the absolute value of x is less than 1. But in the denominator, we see that factorial. The factorial is going to leave some n's behind in the denominator in the limit from the ratio test. So the limit from the ratio test is going to be 0, regardless of the value of x. So we would be correct in saying, I think this converges for all real numbers. So now we've got this series representation for the time. Good questions. So we can use this to find the series representation for cosine. The derivative of x is one minus x cubed over three factorial. So I'd have three x squared over three factorial, the threes cancel out. And so we end up with x, uh, sorry, one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial and so on. Still gonna be alternating, but cosine is gonna be the even one. Sine is the odd one. That works perfect because sine is an odd function and cosine is an even function. And that's how you're going to remember which one is it. Questions? How's everybody okay? Too much, too fast? It's hard to tell. Went to a comedy show and the comedian was doing crowd work. Everybody knows what crowd work is. That's when you pick a member of the audience, someone that you can see. But you can tell it might happen if the front if the front row is like really close to the stage and well lit. And you start picking on people. Like some comics don't care. They 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 want the audience, of course, to enjoy themselves and happy and stuff like that. But they're not part of the show. They come up here, they do the show, they never really talk to specific members of the audience. But someone that's going to do crowd work is going to pick on some people, ask about them, and then make fun of them. 
And that's like, first of all, I applaud that because I go, that's very brave. Stand up on its own is very brave. When you stand up on a stage and you're supposed to be funny. That's scary. And now you're gonna involve other people and try to be funny with them. That's even like more scary. That's why I do this job because there's no requirement for me, for me to be funny. And just come in, you're a captive audience. You have to be here. Otherwise your parents would be all mad at you. And so you're stuck here. And now that I pointed that out, you're really feeling, feeling stuck here, aren't you? Especially because it's almost nine o'clock. And now I just made everybody look at the clock. That's mind control. I have a more subtle version of mind control. Instead of talking about the clock, I'll try this on Friday. It'll, things, you'll think it'll be too soon, but all I have to do to do, make everybody turn and look at the clock is this. I do that in a pause when I'm talking about math problems. Now everybody is like, oh, oh, Leach knows what time it is now. Now I need to know what time it is, but he's still watching. So you wait till I turn, turn around, then you're like, well, what time is it? Even if you have a watch on, you'll look at the clock because I use mind control. I go, hmm? Hmm? And I go, oh no, now I have to look at the clock. Now, every time I look at the clock for the rest of the semester, you're gonna try really hard to not look at the clock. This is how I make you miss portions of the lecture. Because I'll be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm about to say something important, but now you're trying so hard to not look at the clock, you miss what I just said. No. Anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yes. So I didn't write it down partially because I didn't leave myself enough space, partially because I want you all to do it. I want you to find the Taylor series for cosine of x by taking the derivative of the series for sine of x and also by um, finding derivatives and verifying it that way. Although all you have to do is just erase one prime and start there and everything works out exactly as expected. Right? So you don't actually have to write down the derivatives. It's a bigger win if you just like, I'll subtract one prime and just start here. And then you say you get the same stuff. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Tomorrow, some more Taylor series. No, not tomorrow. Friday, some more Taylor series. Because day off is class tomorrow. Back on Friday. So messed up. See y'all on Friday. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing.